What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we're going to be looking at the Doug Fister trade, which occurred back on July 30th, 2011. Now, basically at this point in time, the Detroit Tigers were looking to add one more starting pitcher. They wanted to have a very strong rotation and they had their eyes set on Seattle's Doug Fister. Seattle, as was the case for the majority of the 2000s after the first couple years, they weren't doing that good. So they were willing to trade away a guy who was essentially wasting away in Seattle for some assets. So how'd this trade work out? We're going to start by looking at the Detroit Tigers, who got a pair of pitchers in this deal. The first of whom is, of course, starting pitcher Doug Fister. Now, Fister was lights out for the remainder of the 2011 campaign, as he pitched at the tune of an 8-1 record with a 1.79 ERA. That is insane. Now, he had a decent showing in the playoffs, which included a clutch win in Game 5 of the ALDS, but Detroit would fall in the ALCS. He missed some time in 2012 due to a ribcage injury, but he played well over that season, going 10-10 with a 3.45 ERA. Now, on September 27th of that year, Fister tied an AL record by striking out nine consecutive batters. Now, 2012 was where he really stepped up in the postseason. Across three games... Fister had a 1.40 ERA. However, he did go 0-1 because he just didn't get any run support from the Tigers. He was hit by a comebacker in Game 2 of the World Series that year, but he stayed in the game. Fortunately for him, he managed to stay relatively healthy through the 2013 season and responded with a strong year, going 14-9 with a 3.67 ERA. He pitched well in the playoffs, but Detroit would lose in the ALCS for the second time in three years. Now, he ends up getting traded away as the team was kind of looking to add new pitchers. They wanted to get pitchers who had a higher strikeout total, as Fister was the type of guy who got a lot of ground balls. So they kind of got rid of him, and they wanted to cut some payroll. Now, they traded him to the Washington Nationals in exchange for three players, the first of whom is starting pitcher Robbie Ray. Now, we know Robbie Ray is the 2021 AL Cy Young winner, but is that what Detroit got? Well... He spent most of the first half of 2014 in the minors before being called up in August for good. He struggled with a 1-4 record and an ERA of 8.16. Now, as a result, you know, they kind of, they weren't in position to wait out prospects, so they traded him away. We did discuss this in the D.D. Gregorius trade, which will be linked in the description below. Detroit also got relief pitcher Ian Kroll in this trade, and across two years for the Tigers, Kroll had a 2-3 record with a 5.34 ERA, while also earning a single save. Now, he got traded as well, and we did discuss this one in the Ioannis Cespedes trade, which will also be linked in the description below. Now, lastly, the Tigers also got second baseman Steve Lombardozzi, and Lombardozzi, he ends up getting traded during his first spring training with the club to the Baltimore Orioles in exchange for shortstop Alex Gonzalez. Gonzalez had a buck 67 with bad defensive stats across only nine games before the Tigers decided, you know what, enough was enough, and they released him. Now, the Tigers also got reliever David Pauly in the original trade for Fister, and he would go 0-2 with a 5.95 ERA across 14 games before they released him. So, outside of Fister, the Tigers didn't do all that well in this trade. How did the Seattle Mariners do? So, Seattle got four players in return for Fister. The first player is outfielder Casper Wells. Now, Wells had a solid start to his tenure in Seattle, as he had a streak of four consecutive games with a home run in the middle of August. But he cooled off down the stretch, and he ended the, he ended the year with a, two point, with a .216 average and only seven homers. So that clear was, you know, just a random hot stretch there. He served as an outfielder four in 2012, hitting .228 with 10 homers and over 93 games. And then he would get designated for the assignment and eventually waived. Now they also got a pair of relievers, the first of whom is Charlie Furbush. And Furbush spent the remainder of 2011 as a starter but he struggled with an ERA north of six. And this led to him being converted to a reliever, which is why we have him listed as reliever in 2012. And he responded with the best season of his career. He had an ERA of 2.72, and he was also a part of Seattle's first ever no hitter. He would spend the next three years as a low leverage bullpen arm. And then he would suffer a partially torn rotator cuff in 2016, which forced him to miss the entire season. And then the Mariners kind of decide, you know what, we can replace him. So they let him walk as a free agent. They also got reliever Chance Ruffin and Ruffin over parts of two different MLB seasons, recorded a 1-2 record with a 5.70 ERA across 22 appearances before retiring. Now, lastly, they got third baseman Francisco Martinez. 
Martinez spent parts of three years in the minors, reaching as high as double A, before he was traded back to Detroit for cash. We will not be discussing this trade as it is a very inconsequential trade. Detroit doesn't get anything and Seattle doesn't get anything out of it. So so that's how Seattle and Detroit did. How did the two secondary teams do? We'll start with the Washington Nationals because they got uh, starting pitcher Doug Fister. Now, Fister missed the first month of the 2014 season with a latch strain. And after returning, he had the best year of his career. He posted career marks in wins with 16 and DRA with 2.41. Now, keep in mind, when Fister was originally acquired by the Tigers, he had 1.79 ERA. That was over half season. Now, he would throw seven, season, seven innings of shutout baseball in his lone postseason start for the Nationals. He did regress the following year, however, going 5-7 and seven with a 4.19 ERA. But, while he was moved to the bullpen, he did earn his first and only save in the Major League level at the end of that year. But once his contract was up, the Nationals, the Nationals decided it was best to move on. Lastly, we have the Baltimore Orioles, who got second baseman Steve Lombardo, Lombardozzi. And Lombardozzi, across 20 games, hit 288, but he failed to provide much else, which led to his demotion and eventual release. So now we have... My favorite part of these MLB trade breakdowns, the war summary. So who won this trade? So it was cl- a little closer than I thought. But Detroit won this with a 7.1 war. Fister was the only player who did anything. Everyone else hurt the Tigers. Uh, Seattle got a 2.6, mostly from Furbush and Wells, of course. And then Washington made it somewhat close, getting a very strong year out of Fister, going 4.4. And then Baltimore, unfortunately, got a negative 0.7. Hope you guys enjoyed this. This was the Doug Fister trade. Have a good rest of your day.